Recently, we learned about the specs of the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. In fact, these next-gen consoles use hardware that is similarly spec to modern PCs. They both have an 8-core AMD Zen 2 processor, much like the Ryzen 7 3700X. The Xbox Series X has 12 teraflops of graphical compute power, which is just under the power of an RTX 2080 Ti. The PlayStation 5 has a custom SSD that can be read as fast as 5.5 gigabits a second, similar to PCIe Gen 4 NVMe drives that exist out there today. So I thought, why not put all these together and see what kind of performance we can expect from the next gen consoles. Now before going any further, I just want to acknowledge that what I'm doing is like comparing apples to oranges. These benchmarks that I'm about to share with you won't translate one to one with the next gen consoles. Just because this build performs in a certain way doesn't mean that the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox will perform the same. Far from it. But it does give us some context to these specs and it is representative of what kind of raw power these machines will hold. For the motherboard, I'm using MSI's MPG X570 Gaming Plus. The CPU is a Ryzen 7 3800X, which clocks higher than the 3700X I mentioned earlier, but I did underclock it to 3.5 gigahertz to match the PlayStation 5's specs. The CPU cooler is a Noctua NHL9A. For RAM, I have 16 gigabytes of Crucial's ballistic DDR4 memory. As mentioned earlier, we also have one terabyte of storage using Corsair's PCIe Gen 4 MPC 600 NVMe drive. Our graphics card comes from ASUS and it is the ROG Strix Gaming RTX 2080 Ti OC Edition. Ideally I should be using an RTX 2080 Super as its amount of teraflops is similar to the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X's specs at 11 teraflops. But the RTX 2080 Ti is all that I had, and I don't think that going out for a graphics card is considered essential in these times. And finally, I'm using an ROG Thor 850 watt power supply from Asus. I've also included a $500 PC as a reference point to what kind of machine you can get for the expected cost of these consoles. I'll go into detail about this $500 build in a future video, so if you're interested in seeing that, don't forget to subscribe so you can catch that video when it comes out. Now, I tested Grand Theft Auto V, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Fortnite in load times and average frames per second on the two PC machines and a PlayStation 4 Pro. Starting with Grand Theft Auto V, booting the game took up 49 seconds on the NVMe drive and the SSD. The PC version of this game has a menu screen, whereas the PlayStation 4 version loads up right into a save. Loading up a save on the PC took 28 seconds on the NVMe drive and 30 seconds on the SSD. The PS4 Pro is still chugging along and it took just under two minutes to load up. Starting a new game and loading out of the open world and into a cutscene took the Gen 4 NVMe drive 38 seconds while the SSD took 40 seconds. The PS4 Pro took a minute and 24 seconds. Moving on to Red Dead Redemption 2, the PS4 version of the game booted up faster into the menu, but that's about it. Loading up a save took 37 seconds on the NVMe and SSD drives, while the PS4 Pro took almost a minute and a half. And starting a new game? Well, that'll be another minute for the PS4 Pro, while the PCs go and get it done in about half of the time at 31 seconds. Fortnite on the PS4 Pro boots up almost as fast as it does on the PCs, being only 20 seconds behind. However, when loading into a game, it takes about 43 seconds, whereas the NVMe drive loaded up the map in a blazing fast 14 seconds. Let me break down what this means for the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Looking at the current generation of consoles using mechanical drives really impedes the load times. The PS5's SSD is really impressive on paper, but I don't think it will be such a vast improvement over the Xbox Series X. PCs see a significant improvement when switching over to flash-based storage for their boot drives. As we've seen in our small test here, the difference between a traditional SSD and a Gen 4 NVMe drive isn't that drastic. However, the next-gen consoles are using a more advanced flash-based storage to essentially future-proof themselves. Remember, once these consoles release, the hardware is locked in for a few years until the next cycle. Now, let's look at graphical performance. In this test, I used the built-in benchmarks in Grand Theft Auto V and Red Dead Redemption 2. Since Fortnite does not have a built-in benchmark, I played for 30 minutes on each machine and came up with an average. It should be noted that the console versions of Red Dead Redemption 2 and Grand Theft Auto V are locked in at 30 frames per second, with Fortnite operating at 60 FPS. Grand Theft Auto V on the next-gen PC performed incredibly well, averaging over 165 frames per second. 
the $500 PC performed admirably, giving us at least 60 FPS over the course of the test. Looking at a more modern game, Red Dead Redemption 2, we see the PC getting over 104 frames per second, and again with the budget build hovering just over 60. And finally, Fortnite. We got 136 frames per second on the next-gen PC. While the budget PC only averaged 51 frames per second, however, this is on the highest graphical setting. So given that this specific 2080 Ti from Asus actually has 14 teraflops, the performance is probably a little bit higher than what we'll get on the Xbox Series X. But to be honest, we'll most likely see similar performance between the two consoles, at least for the first batch of games. We often see developers unlock more performance from the consoles as time goes on. So what does all this data really mean? Well, nothing. The time has come for console players to enjoy modern gaming hardware, and that's what this is really about. The PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One X have run their course and their hardware has become dated. Sony and Microsoft have done a really great job of specking out their consoles with top of the line gaming hardware in 2020. Console gamers can expect to easily hit 60 frames per second at 4K resolution. Are load times gonna go away? Probably not, but they will be vastly improved for the console gamer. Now the question becomes, PlayStation or Xbox? Well, the reality is, is that most likely both consoles will perform the same. It's gonna be up to the third party developers to create good ports of these games that take advantage of each console's strength. We've seen in the past how some developers can get lazy and do a poor job of porting games. That's why first party titles are so important. Sony's Spider-Man series and Xbox's Halo could serve as the ultimate tech demo that really flexes each console's muscle. The only reason why I own a PS4 Pro is to play MLB The Show. But now that that is going cross-platform starting next year, I have a tough decision when it comes to the next-gen consoles. There's also a cost to consider. The next-gen consoles are expected to cost between $500 and $700. The PC hardware equivalent of this is over $2,000. The PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X are going to be a really good bang for the buck when they release. Hey everybody, don't forget to wash your hands. The CDC recommends that you wash your hands for at least 20 seconds. Every time you come in from grabbing groceries or something like that, wash your hands, all right? Now continue to practice social distancing. Stay here locked in on CNET and click on one of these related videos.